Hey everybody, welcome back to part two. We're gonna to talk to John Thompson about the world of venture capital. So stay tuned. So John, I just wanna uh, change it up a little bit and um, talk a little bit about, you know, the, the venture capital world, right? I mean, cause you know, this is a, Confluor is a, a venture capital backed company. Um, and, and, you know, the pandemic has really disrupted the venture capital ecosystem. Um, and I'm sure, you know, you've, you've got a bunch of companies in your portfolio um, and you've got, I'm sure, a lot of companies trying to get your attention these days. You know, what advice are you providing, you know, both to the companies in your portfolio and companies that want to be in your portfolio? Well, I think the number one issue for all of those companies these days is how much cash do you have on hand? Said differently, do you have enough cash on hand to last you, let's say, 24 to 36 months? Yeah. Because that's the critical moment in time for these companies right now. If they have that kind of cash on hand, then the next question becomes, are there cost actions that you can or should take that will enhance the company's ability to preserve its cash during this uncertain period of time? And then third, what are you going to do to drive demand? Because ultimately, it's all about being able to get more orders, get more business, if you will. So it's at, at the end of the day, every one of these companies is working really, really hard, but they've got to have enough cash on hand to be able to weather this crazy storm that we don't know how long it's going to be. Yeah. So, I mean, if a company's, you know, if somebody's coming to pitch you an idea, what, what sort of ideas are you looking for? Well, right now, anything that is AI, ML, video, those are all the things that seem to be getting the attention, if you will. Uh, when I joined the VC firm at Lightspeed about two years ago, I was shocked when 80, 90 percent of the companies that walked through the door all talk AI, ML. Uh, well, that's because that was the hot technology. And what's starting to evolve now is more in the consumer space. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in light of the COVID situation. But it's also this notion of work from home is going to drive a consumer enterprise connection that we've never seen before. And that's a place where security is going to be even more critical than ever before. And if you look at many of the companies that Lightspeed has invested in beyond Confluera, They've done really, really big investments in the security space. And so this is an area that's going to get a lot of attention over the course of the next two to three years for sure. Yeah, you, you said something that's really interesting there, you know, it, in that it's, it's kind of more of a consumer-centric focus, even for the enterprise now. Um, I, I don't think that there is a single enterprise that can't view itself as a tech company, and there's not a single enterprise that shouldn't view itself as What's my path direct to a consumer? Mm -hmm. I, I have been on some boards of some companies that have a point of view about what they are and where they are, when in fact, as the markets have evolved around them, they have lost out on huge opportunities. And I think this is an inflection point that is occurring that many companies are going to have to ask themselves, what do I want to be or who do I want to be five years from now? Because five years from now, the world will be very different than it is today for sure. Yeah, no doubt. I I, I got to imagine we're going to see some spectacular pivots right now. I would um, think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you mentioned some a couple sectors that are really, really you see evolving big AI, ML, and and sort of the audio, video, conferencing, and and, and things like that. Um, are are there anything, any other sectors that you see as you know potential really big boom areas? Well, I mean, it's it's somewhat ironic, but um, many of the VC firms in the Valley now, the top ones, have started to do more in life science. Hmm. And the notion of being able to take the digital content and the insights that come from the analytics, if you will, around life science, that's going to be a very, very interesting opportunity as time goes on. Uh, many, I mean, I was just on a call this morning with an Andreessen Horowitz team that is, in fact, building, not unlike Lightspeed, a very, very substantial life science business. So that's an area that we need to monitor very, or watch very, very closely. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I got to imagine, you know, as, as uh, life sciences grows, there's going to be increasing demand for security in that front, too, because that's a, that's, a, that's a tough beast from a compliance and regulatory perspective to tackle. 
Yeah, you're, it, it's interesting you'd say that because one of Lightspeed's other security companies is a little company called Leap Year. Hmm. Leap Year has an ability to allow people to have access to private confidential data without releasing the data itself. So hmm. you get the insights from the data without actually having to have the data move off site. And I think in the case of life science, financial services, a bunch of the more highly regulated industries, products or companies like Leap Year will emerge over the course of the next few years very, very strongly. Yeah, that sounds like an interesting company to take a look at. I, I, I'd be curious in, in the technologies that they're using to make that happen. I, I'm sure you could apply that to a lot of industries as well. Well, it, it's got some of the same AI, ML elements, if you will, as every new product seems to these days. Yeah, well, and, it, and it, it's 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 interesting, uh, you know, from a VC perspective, you know, Sundish and I go out and, and talk to, to a lot of the firms um, fairly frequently. And one of the things that we saw, you know, for the last couple of years is that, as you say, that big shift to AIML. And I, and I think, you know, it was, it was a tr really challenging area to, to, to monetize, right. To make, make go for a long time, because there's a lot of complexity to it. And there's, you know, explaining the value proposition of some of the companies is, is tricky. Um, but all of a sudden now we're seeing a lot of value coming out of that, segment which is really cool to see well it's um it's been interesting to watch many of these young companies go from startup to in the case of rubric just an incredibly powerful company at this point in time it was or is by some measures the fastest growing his company in the history of silicon valley and they're in a huge huge category called data yeah. Backup and recovery. And that's about a $75, $80 billion annual opportunity. And so they're doing very, very well. But it's intensely competitive. And yeah. that's what's likely to happen in the security space as well. Because more and more digital content will be created. More and more smart people will have come into and out of security companies. And more and more security companies will be created day in and day out. This is inevitable, I think, quite frankly. Yeah, well, and in, in, in the security space, you know, there's been a lot of historically been a lot of niche players. For sure. um, so I, I got to imagine there's going to be a certain amount of, you know, consolidation and, uh, you know, seeing a, a, a few big winners coming out of it, you know, at the end of this. Well, one of the things I tried to do during my time at Symantec was to create a more horizontal platform of security. In other words, a customer could come to us and buy all of what they might have needed to protect, if you will, their infrastructure. Yeah. Well, in a large enterprise today, that's probably 75 to 100 different products. Yeah. And, and I think what we've got to do in the space is figure out how to aggregate more and more of that functionality into a horizontal product such that the customer doesn't have to worry about product A through 100 as opposed to the service that is being delivered or rendered by those products. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, we've been talking about how uh, there's just so many uh, technologies out there in the market right now and having a platform that is simple. And, uh, you know, we, you know, security is like a market of a lot of complexity. And so to make it simple for a customer to have an outcome, I think is incredibly important these days. So totally agree. Another Lightspeed company that's trying to do just that in the cloud is called Netscope. Mm -hmm. And they are essentially an expanded version of Zscaler. So Zscaler had a very focused uh, mm -hmm. view of what they could deliver. And what Netscope has done is, says, look, what Zscaler has done is perfect. It really works well. But oh, by the way, you need a broader footprint if you want to cover more and more of the functional capability that you're operating with online. And so they have a more horizontal view, quite frankly, which is exactly what I envisioned many, many years ago was needed in this space. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, when you talk security in depth, um, you know, I don't know that you ever get away from, you know, if not multiple products, but multiple products within a portfolio. Um, but I think, you know, there's, there's really uh, a deep need for sort of that aggregation piece of it. You know, sure. and I think, I think that's why Confluera is sort of an interesting, you know, point of uh of you know of security because i think there's a lot of aggregation that goes on there that's 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 compelling right it seems john is really enjoying the vc world <laughs> <laughs> i i refer to this as chapter four of my career <laughs> well it's a wonderful book 
Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you, you've had an opportunity to lead some, you know, pretty incredible companies. And I, you know, I think, you know, if, if I look back at the timelines when you were at various companies, I, we see all the uh, sort of heydays of, of these companies. So now you can bring that a little bit of that magic to a larger audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And the other thing is the experience, right? Uh, having that experience goes a long way. You know, that's why we always look up to people like John and really pick their brains and uh, learn from the people that have been there and done it before. Um, yeah, much of what I do at Lightspeed is not at all deal flow. It's not about trying to determine what's the next big opportunity we ought to invest in because they've got brilliant people on the team that do that work and do it much better than I ever could. But my job or role there is much more about helping the portfolio companies figure out how to scale, mm -hmm. help a young CEO figure out what he or she should do as they're navigating through this situation or that situation. And that role is very consistent with, you know, the 48 plus years that I've had in this industry so far. Well, I, I know when we were talking before, you know, one of the things that you, you mentioned you really loved was, you know, being a salesman, you know, yeah. you, you enjoy, you enjoy the sales aspect of all of this. And that's got to, I mean, you know, that's a lot of really great experience to bring to some of these companies, I'm sure. Well, as I've always said, selling doesn't start until somebody says no. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes that person is internally that is telling, you no. Chris, I, I will say, I think, you know, I've, I've known John for almost 10 years now, if not a little north of 10 years. And let me tell you, I've learned a lot of valuable lessons from him, <laughs> especially when it comes to uh, to selling. He's uh, he's a man of many talents. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, and when you say, uh, you know, it starts with with the no. I, there, there, I was reading that book, uh, Moonshots, recently. And, you know, one of the things they talk about is the three no's. You got to get the three no's before, you know, you really have something compelling, uh, which is a lot of no's. <laughs> well, if it's easy, then it's not fun and exciting. But if it's hard and uh, you can accomplish something, then it's not just a job. It's actually uh, a challenge. And uh, that's that's what I get off on. If someone hasn't said no, you're just taking orders. You're yeah. not selling. Yep. Right. Yeah. There's no value in, in that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they may see value in the product, Yeah. but it's not requiring you to truly sell you know, because they've seen so much value that you don't have to sell. It's when they don't see the value or haven't paid attention that you really do have to engage and convince them that it's time for them to think about this differently. Well, you know, it, it's interesting you say that because, you know, one of the things that Sundash and I always talk about is that, um, you know, CIOs and organizations these days have been really, you know, they, in 2008, they became very financially oriented CIOs and many of them reporting to CFOs, right? Um, but now, because of the world the way it is and data becoming a strategic asset in the sense that it is, is that CIOs are really looking to deliver more top line value to the business through technology. Um, and, and it's, it, I think the value uh, that people can bring to these companies is in helping them take a more strategic look at their portfolio and, and at the market and helping align goals with products in the market, which is, I think where people struggle a lot these days. No, I think that's right. I think that's right. Well, so uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Uh, really appreciate you coming on. Mukesh, uh, congratulations on that uh, Series B again, and, and good luck with uh, sales at, at Confluera. And John, thank you so much. I know you're just an incredibly busy you know, human being out there uh, you know, trying to navigate the world of endless conference calls here. Uh, so I really appreciate you taking the time and and just, uh, you know, dropping your knowledge on us because uh, I'm sure it'll be valuable to a lot of people. So thank you. Great to join you. Really great to join you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Stay thank safe. Thank you. Yeah, stay safe out there. All the best. So that wraps up part two. If you like what you saw, click the like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get notified when we post new content, click on that bell icon. And I will see you in the next video.